commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be Overwatch. Mighty on the verge of a championship if he can pull this match out. Aegis upper left hand corner is the pink Zerg bottom right hand corner. We have Mighty as the red Terran. Is this the first ZVT that we've seen on Overwatch? I believe it might be. Might be. I feel like this is a map where... So you don't have a... Exposed main, and there's a lot you got to go in pretty deep with mutalisks to get to the main But the natural expansion has kind of that nice cliff side edge where mutalisks can dive in and out So I I am expecting a repeat build from mighty of Muta or sorry of, of Goliath with Tron booster upgrade And I'm almost expecting to see a another two hatch Muta play maybe three hatch Muta from Agistol so a repeat of last game but I think with the different map architecture, a ramp that's kind of, you can see where you can take angles, and a natural expansion that's somewhat exposed, and also kind of these ramps that kind of punish ground unit play. What I'm trying to say is, is I'm wondering if this map ar architecture favors Agisil's style of play and punishes Mighty's mech. Although one thing is sometimes with mech you can just get a seal. And we could see that, where, you know, just a couple Goli a Goliath ring here, which would make it practically impossible to breach. And then some siege tank lines across this area. Also make it difficult for that corner to be dealt with. We are seeing a 12th hatch opener, looks like. From Agistol. Drone there in location. Keep in mind, it is a two-player map. But regardless, Mighty has, for every opponent he's gone up against, has been able to seal his front door and put his opponent in the dark. SCV making his way across. He does have that refinery up and has put three SCV in gas. So at the very least, we know we're seeing some variation of factory play. Start things off. Spawning pool and extractor. Again, very similar build from Aegis. And not blocking... So there is a window if he can get past this SCV to maybe sneak up. But SCV in a 1-on-1 fight versus a drone will win. Pulling back, actually plopping the... Interesting. Plopping the factory down on the corner and building that first marine. And... Pulling back and again cutting SCV production. So this is looking more 1-1-1-ish on that refinery. We'll see. He... Here's the thing, Mighty does a lot of interesting things with his early build orders versus Zerg. I mean, we've seen that command center with the Vulture to try to clear that natural, things like that. I don't know. This might also be in reaction to a complete lack of Zerglings that he saw in that last match. Seeing that second, uh, actually seeing the lair being built, big indicator for Aegis. Zerglings out to try to catch that SCV. And actually opting to just run by. Maybe they'll be able to go up and get a scout. Yeah, command center being built again. And a vulture being produced. Looking for that armory for Mighty. Because, yeah, I am expecting another round of drones. Mutalisks here. 12 o'clock hatchery being taken. With that vulture, though, which is now out on the map... It's going to be a little bit. It's got to wait for that Marine to produce and for the barracks to lift off. Might be able to sneak past this creep colony and get some drone kills. We'll see. At the very least, this 12 o'clock hatch is going to be in the dark and undefended, comparatively. Those Zerglings not going to be able to get a lot done otherwise. Lair's finished. Agistil doesn't quite have the resources saved to get the next tier tech. We do see... An Overlord might get sacrificed, perhaps distracted by that. And that's going to put Agistil in the red. At a point where he really critically wanted to be putting tech down too. So Spire, yep, so we're going to see three Hatch Muta. Vulture making its way across. Overlord dying to that Marine. Vulture gets cleaned up quickly and efficiently. And a second factory plopping down. Command Center is once again there, but kind of with nothing to defend it to try to take this natural expansion. Agistil needs some overlords out. A little bit of a detriment in his build order. 
SCV might, it's Zergling's chasing, but might be able to get up there. And with that Zergling moving out of the way, that command center feeling comfortable plopping down here. And this is the, that's the golden area. You can see the minerals facing this back area where the mulesks can just dodge in and out. Charm booster being upgraded. Engineer Bay being built, so it looks like Mighty knows this is coming. SCV sees that 12 o'clock expansion. Now, how many Mutalisks get built here? That's another question. Currently, with this Spire popping, Aegis has enough resources to build three. And actually one now. Does have a lot of gas producing. It's getting level one weapons. Is also producing a creep colony at the 12 o'clock location, just in case there is a Zergling run by. So the delay, though, in this Mutalisk production is going to allow plenty of time for these turrets to get built and plenty more Goliaths to kind of fill up the difference and Charon boosters to come online. So I think Agistal... But one critical thing, though, is this is a wide open ramp. Goliaths are not the most intelligent unit in Brood War, in StarCraft in general. And this is a lot of territory to try to cover. But I don't think Agistal can win the game on his Mutalisks alone. Producing several currently. They're making their way across the map. That's four and more and more being produced. I do think we're going to see a very large dedication to Mutalisks. Especially with that level one weapons. Being upgraded. Grouping up, I think, what's going to be a full nine here. At that natural. Engineer Bang trying to be positioned over that turret line. Zergling paying its life. There's seven Mutalisks at the base and more incoming. So I think this is going to be full nine. Getting a view of kind of the defensive structure. That's five Goliaths. A little bit of Miss Micro from Magistral. Already losing one Mutalisk. Second Mutalisk looks like it's going to get taken out. Down to five. Down to four. Three. This is not looking good. And level one weapons not in play yet. So five Mutalisks backing up. One of them heavily damaged. Two over the wings. That is not the initial engagement he was looking for. Still continuing to produce Mutalisks. He wants to win it on Mutalisks alone. Not a lot of Goliaths in position here at this natural expansion. I think this is the key area he wants to dive into. He does have eight Mutalisks. Might be wanting to wait for the full 11 to be able to one-shot that turret. Keep in mind, lag can be a big factor in between. But if the game proceeds as it's proceeding currently with these five hatcheries, Agistal is going to end up coming ahead in this. Goliaths trying to make their way. Again, this is a difficult natural expansion to get into. Only took down the turret. Didn't really get a lot of SCV kills there. And there's a swarm of Goliaths to engage here now. Taking his 9 o'clock. Diving in, going for another turret, but Mutalisks again getting whittled down. Loses another one. Things are not looking good for Agistal. Level 1 weapons just now coming online. Is that? Le yeah, level 1. Hydralis Den is up. Swapping tech. He does have map control currently. But map control doesn't mean a lot when you're going up against this mech build. So I think Agistol would have been... I, I feel like it losing that Overlord. And also just... Being a little bit flustered, perhaps, wasn't quite able to execute this build the way he wanted to. And as a result, you've got a bunch of Goliaths out, more turrets being plopped down, and the window to be able to find a way to win this match is closing. Because this is pure, pure Goliaths with level 1 armor. Yeah, that's level 1 weapons with the Mutalisks. Yeah, Goliaths are slow, but... Still. Aegis diving in on the few Goliaths that are here to try to keep that count low. Again, more Goliaths reinforcing. Gonna end up losing another two, maybe three Mutalisks. Yeah, and just doesn't have... None of these engagements have been going well for him. End up losing, I believe he ended up losing more Mutalisks there than Mighty Lost Goliaths. By, I think two which is not the sort of trades you want 
I think a bit of an accidental liftoff <laughs> when trying to build a CompSat station. I think it's a little bit out of position now for Mighty. It'll disrupt a little bit of mining, but that's not a game-losing situation. More Mutalisks gathering up. Aegis getting the Hydralisk range upgrade. Carapace 1. Armor 1 for his Mutalisks. I don't think that's going to be in place by the time this push starts making its way across, though. An Overlord getting caught on that corner. Three Siege Tanks. A huge grouping of Goliaths. Now starting to group up. The reinforcements out of these five factories should be able should, should be sufficient. This bridge, a little bit of a danger area for these Goliaths, so they got to go the slow. Well, maybe they'll close that gap. Mules need, be in, need to be in position to kind of capitalize on that, though. And this is again where Goliaths are not smart. So there's at least that advantage. Also, this 12 o'clock base is very much exposed to all of this. Mules now diving in, trying to get reinforcement point, but still. Not finding a lot. This is mighty backing up momentarily. I think he can just ignore this. Again, wait for reinforcements. Has plenty of turrets. He's catching a couple stragglers as they're having trouble grouping. It's not... Still don't think it's enough, though. As this death ball regrouping. Still plenty of siege tanks. That's only a single sunken colony. And... I don't even know that he's going to go for that. He might just go for... Yeah, he's actually just pushing towards the main. Another big fleet... Of mutalists coming in. This is a lot of mutalists, though. They don't want to come in piecemeal like this, though. Engaging hydralists underneath. Agisol might have had a large enough economy to group this. We will see once the dust settles what happens. A lot of mutalists overhead. They are getting some good focus fire. The Goliaths attack walking their way back, but more reinforcements coming across, and the mutalist count is dwindling. More reinforcements. And this is going to be macro versus macro, and reinforcement point versus reinforcement point. Five Mutalists remaining. Still plenty of Goliaths. Another grouping of Mutalists diving in. Overhead. They're not doing a good job of focus firing the Goliaths that are on the ground, unfortunately. And Edge is still just pouring immense amount of resources into this. Desperately trying to wipe these Goliaths out. More Mutalists pouring through. It's just an endless wave of Mutalists on top of this Goliath line. The, the Siege Tank's still not in position. Five more Mutalists. Maybe if they can group up and attack that low ground, because Agistil, sitting on four bases, is pouring out a lot of units here. And this is not a lot left for Mighty, and he's got a long way to walk to, to reinforce this. Another Mutalist wandering up. Might be able, yeah, easily going to be able to take out these siege tanks. But another large grouping of Goliaths coming to engage. Still more and more Mutalists pouring through. They are, they do have that upgrading that's about equivalent, keep in mind. Another Sunken Colony being planted. The Mutalists trying to engage on the high ground, but unfortunately with that spotting, they are, yeah, in that air attack. There's no misfire up into the air. They're getting wiped out. I think that's it. I think there's too many Goliaths. And Agistil is slowly just bleeding what economy he had by... Throwing kind of sacrificial meat. More reinforcements streaming across once the second line of Goliath gets here. I think that's going to be all she wrote. A couple of Zerglings on the ground. Try to provide some defense. Splash from the siege taking, taking out another Goliath. But it's just a mutilous massacre. Aegis GG's Mighty is Chobo League champ this year. Congratulations to him. Good effort. I think this will be forever remembered in Zerg history as the day of the Mutalisk massacre. That's how they'll write it down in their history books. But Mighty, comparatively, for Terran, we'll talk about the great day where the Mutalisks slam themselves mercilessly in waves into our missiles. And our missiles prevailed. Congratulations to Mighty, closing out BSL 11, Chobo League, as Chobo League champion. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It was fun to cast. Look forward to... I'm going to try to do some... I have some uh, fun in-between games. One of Art of Turtle. Uh, another game of Scan, actually, versus Kala, I believe, from that series. To do on one of those fun side maps. But otherwise, we'll do that. And then we'll start diving into BSL 12. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.